Hello people from all around the world, my name is Ellie and today I'm going to share with you my productive morning routine. Ever since I was a student, I have been used to waking up pretty early. When I say pretty early, my productive time is between 5.30 and 6.30 a.m. So I usually try to stick to this time frame to wake up. Because if I wake up later, um, I'm usually not really productive for the rest of the day. And when I say productive, for me it is a combination to do things for myself, to be a better person to be around, but also to be able to do all of those little things that you have to do because, you know, you're an adult, like putting the dishes away and things like this. Um, so every day when I wake up, I turn off my alarm. I use a separate phone for my alarm and my iPhone is usually somewhere in the living room so I don't sleep with my phone in the room. Then I just open the blinds, I let some fresh air, I don't make my bed right away and I go to the bathroom and then I go straight into the kitchen and oil pool with coconut oil for about five to ten minutes. And while I'm oil pooling, I always make myself a cup of tea. So this morning it was peppermint tea, but I change that every day depending on the mood. Since we're in my kitchen and I'm waiting for my tea to, do you say to steep? Like, just like make itself to steep? I think it's, it's, the, it's the correct word. I'm gonna show you my extensive tea collection because it's part of my ritual in the morning I just choose whatever sounds good in the moment today it's a peppermint tea but for example yesterday I had my favorite I'm gonna show you my favorite loose leaf rooibos it's a vanilla rooibos tea I love it so much some days I have green tea or black tea but most of the time it's some kind of herbal tea in the morning or something something without uh, caffeine so, for example, rooibos is one of the only teas that doesn't have any caffeine. And then I also love thyme tea. I'm trying as much as possible to switch to loose leaf teas since they're healthier in a way. Because, you know, there have been a few scandals with um, tea pockets and all the chemicals they put in those tea bags. And also the quality of the ingredients is way better if you know the source and everything but I obviously have tea pockets uh, for when I travel and I have some from like a few years ago but I'm trying as much as possible to switch to loose leaf tea. For example, this is a Canadian tea, it's a maple syrup black tea which is really good. Then I have a apricot lavender green tea from Damanfrey which is an amazing brand of teas. What else do we have? Um, we have chamomile tea, we have some loose leaf, I think it's peppermint tea from my um, grandpa's garden from Slovakia, it's just dried. Then we have, I mean we have a lot of things, we have some jasmine green tea, but those are not even good and they're so expensive at the organic store. When I went to Thailand in December, I bought the real jasmine green tea and let me tell you, it is so, so, so good. I'm going to show it to you. So this one comes from Thailand and it's the best jasmine tea I ever had. And the funny thing is, when I opened it and when I tried it for the first time, I was really surprised by the the taste of the jasmine, it's not the the jasmine I'm used to having in teas, so maybe I never had real jasmine, who knows. But my favorite green teas are jasmine green tea or genmai cha uh, green tea, which is green tea with roasted rice. And then whenever I want something light and caffeine free in the morning, I have either vanilla rooibos or thyme tea or... Uh, tea, I, I'm not sure how you call that in English. And yeah, this morning it happened that I had some peppermint in the in the kitchen, but I rarely buy peppermint, so that's what we're having. And I always like to sweeten my tea with some honey. And one funny thing that a lot of people say in their videos, I don't know if you have noticed, like when they make those what I eat in day videos or they show whatever they eat or make as food, they always refer to honey as raw honey. 
Well, my grandfather in Slovakia uh, used to have bees for a very long time and real honey cannot not be raw because if you boil or cook the honey then it loses its nutrients. So all the honeys you technically purchase are raw. So it's kind of bullshit to say you're eating raw honey because all honey is supposed to be raw and if it's not raw then it's not real honey. That's the only thing I'm gonna tell you. And I think real honey, the one you can buy in like a cooperative, in like smaller villages you can buy directly from the from the farmer or from the producer of the honey. I don't know how you call in English the person who has bees, like a beekeeper, no, not a beekeeper, no. <laughs> sorry, forget that, I just don't know how you call that person. I always like to know where my honey comes from, and a very interesting thing I have learned a few years ago is that it's awesome to consume honey that is from your region or from your city, because all of the allergens that are in the air and all the trees, you can kind of help your immune system to get used to those allergens by consuming local honey. So this one comes from the mountains, so it's not really local, it's not really close to Lyon, it's maybe two hours away from here. Then, not a long time ago, I bought some lavender honey, which is my favorite honey of all times. I bought it in a small village. And it's a cream honey. So, if you want to know, like, if you're interested into honeys, I love honeys. If you want to know the difference between a honey that has this color and a honey that is white. It's not because the honey looked like that when the bees collected it. It's just because um, when they want to put honey into pots, sometimes they cream it, which means they add air to it and they mix it with air. And this is why it looks like this. It's more white and it's really lightweight. It's just because it was mixed with air. Even though I spoke in the clip just before, uh, I usually still oil pull while unloading the dishwasher. Uh, this simple task takes me two minutes and it sets me up for having a clean kitchen. Then I go straight into my bathroom, I wash my hands, I always put my hair up, splash my face with some cold water, and then I scrape my tongue with a copper tongue scraper. I brush my teeth, and then I usually don't wear makeup, I just use this um, face spray, put some moisturizer. If I go out later, I put some um, SPF, but usually I spend a big chunk of my day at home. I sometimes, and when I say sometimes, I would say three or four days out of seven, have some clean and dry clothes to also put away. Technically, I could do it later in the day, it's just that I work in my living room, so at the dining table, since I don't have an office. And I don't want to have to look at dry clothes for the entire day. So I just do it in the morning so it looks a bit more tidy um, in the apartment. Then I do what I have to do. I fold everything away. And then I read for about an hour to an hour and a half every morning. This is my time for myself. I don't go on my phone before starting working and never going on my phone before reading. Um, and then I put some music and I do a 5 to 10 minute tidy up of the apartment. It's very quick and it sets my day uh, for success because everything looks just clean. This is a very important step for myself since I have been home for the past months, I need to change into something that I call human clothes. It doesn't have to be a pair of jeans, but it has to be something that looks a bit more put together. Then I go into my kitchen, I make myself my first cup of coffee and breakfast. So for me, it's always a savory breakfast. And this morning it was a sourdough bagel that I made a huge batch of a few days ago and that I just put into the freezer. So I just reheated it, I put an egg on top, olive oil, some dairy-free emmental cheese, a bit of tomato, and uh, my friend introduced me, I think two years ago, to sriracha, and ever since I have been loving sriracha. A 
if you're wondering what I'm wearing today, it's just this pair of uh, cotton pants from Bershka, a white cotton t-shirt, and it was a bit chilly, so I had a cardigan. With my breakfast on this particular month, I have been taking every day some food supplements, but I don't take food supplements uh, all year round. It's usually like a month or two in the year, and this time of the year, it's just some magnesium and some vitamins. Since the day I filmed the video was a Monday, I just checked my habit tracker for the previous week to just see what I achieved, what I did not achieve. And I ate my breakfast in front of my current TV show, which is Under the Dome. And don't spoil if you have watched it, because I haven't finished it. <laughs> So now I'm just gonna start working and job hunting. It's Monday, I have taken my food supplements, I eat in my breakfast. So before 8.30, 9am I like to start working. It's my first work slot of the day. I usually work for like 3-4 to four hours in the morning and then in the afternoon I do other things like grocery shopping, um, cleaning the apartment, organizing some stuff that doesn't have anything to do with job hunting. Sometimes I do YouTube, sometimes I film. It really depends, but if you would be interested in like me filming a day in life, I think I would love to do that soon. So just let me know if you're interested. And also I'm not wearing any makeup. I would say four to five days a week because I'm usually not really going out. And when I say going out, it's just not like grocery shopping, but like going out and seeing people. Uh, I maybe see my friends twice a week and do something with my I'm so scared. <laughs> it's just the wind. So yeah, I'm not wearing any makeup. I'm just wearing very comfortable clothes, but still I like to dress into something else that are like jogging or pajamas, just so my brain knows it's time to work. And now let's get to work and I'll see you soon. Salut friends.